Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Square Eye Syndrome. I'm Bing Gilman. As always, I'm joined by Tom Hill. Hey. And Dan Rudge. Hello. And never Troy Salmon, who's back in the cupboard with all the other Charm fans. Um, <laughs> what do just, you mean uh, all the other Charmed fans? Oh, I'm going to drop a bit of the, 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 the uh, behind the scenes thing here. We actually were going to do a little Charm special. This but week. There weren't any other charmed fans. Yeah, I know, which I found out. And if there was any, I think they're too shame to admit that their show is shit and they could defend it. So Troy has obviously decided he can't handle though this and has gone back into hiding into the cupboard. So maybe next week we'll get him back for the member Haven Bradley special. Hopefully. Right. Um we hope he we hope he's well. Even though and... that's literally like the opposite of charmed. Yeah. Well, member Haven Bradley. Yes, it's a well-made show about boys who are not magic. Except for that first season, but we're, we're going to... Yeah, we're, we'll, we're we'll leave the Harry Enfield season as, um, yeah. <laughs> and why he did so much better later on in his career. Next week, uh, hopefully yes. Troy will be with us. Um, uh, we hope he as well. Anyway, how are you two guys doing? Yeah, not bad, man. Okay. I, I, am, I am annoyed, pissed off. Why? Because you were ready to rip into Charm fans. No, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to it whenever we get to my... I, I don't have picks today. I have rants. Ooh, okay. Baby. Ooh, the best kind. Okay, so I've got a question for you two because I'm going to go first. What is your tolerance for James Corden or John Barrowman? <laughs> you ready, Tom? Um, would you like <laughs> to go first or would you want me to go first on this? Yeah. Well, I'm sure that the same song popped into our head at the same time. Oh, well, to the tune me. of Piano Man. Sing yes. it for me. Why don't you fuck off, fuck John, off Barrowman. John Barrowman? <laughs> you ruin our <laughs> Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> There's no one likes Torchwood or Dancing on Ice. On ice. Maria or oh, oh, the kids are all, it's all right. right. So glad that we get to talk about Torchwood this week. <laughs> Amateur transplants. Go and look them up. Yeah. Adam, Adam K, absolute genius. <laughs> okay, so and I also okay. want to talk Sorry. about, about James, uh, we'll come back to James uh, Corden in a minute. Okay, um, yeah, so start with John Barrowman. I'm going to talk about Captain Jack. More than I like I'll... that character, actually. Okay, but he's not a good actor. No, but I quite like Captain Jack as a character. I like how flirty he is. But John Barrowman has got a rate of acting range of a cardboard box. All right. So he, here's my thing with that. Okay. I thought John Barrowman was a good actor when I saw him just play Captain Jack. And then I saw that that was all he could do. Yeah. So Captain, Jack, Jack, is, Captain Jack is a character can I, can I, I I know that I, I shouldn't be because I completely agree with you mostly. But even though I hated his inclusion in a particular series... There is one series where I thought he actually gave some extra something. What was that? Arrow. Mm. I can sort of see what you mean. My favourite actor. There there, there was something extra there which was actually something that the rest of the cast were playing off of, that had depth, that had something other than, hey, you know this actor is basically someone who's going to flirt with absolutely everybody anyway so therefore the character's going to do it the same. That's cool but we're not here to talk about Arrow we're here but to talk about Captain Jack Harkness I couldn't give a fuck about him. No, <laughs> basically my favourite my favorite acting performance of him is when he's on the um, when season one of Torchwood he's in a coma. It's the best acting performance John Barrowman does is when he's knocked out that's because you shut the fuck up for five minutes so other people can talk. Yeah, now, Torchwood is a Doctor Who spin-off that is much laughed at, much... Mm, the plots are a bit suspect. Uh, orgasm aliens, swearing, uh, Welsh people. Basically, it's shut up. Not that there's anything wrong with Welsh people. I love the accent. Um, there's great actors in it. It's just... Br- Brune Gorman is one of my favourite people. Yeah. Uh, uh, Naka, uh, um, Nakano Mori, who plays Toshiko Sato, is also very funny, and she's quite good with Christopher Eccleston in that David's uh, John Lennon 
uh, Yoko Kano, BBC documentary. She's very good in that. Uh, Gareth David Lloyd. Gareth David Lloyd is really good as Lanto Jones. And obviously you've got Kai Owen, who's um, Gwen, who's um, Gwen's boyfriend, who's uh, Eve Myers. She's really good in a lot of stuff. Um, but it's a really stupid show and it's just everyone having sex with each other and it's just, they're the worst super... super... Can I, can I... Okay, it's what happens when you try and sort of you're trying to keep it British, but you're trying to Americanize it enough that you can have a, a across the Atlantic two audiences watching the sh- same show. So you're trying to add all of these things in where people are going, okay, so what, what do people watch? What do people watch? And this is the beginning of that sort of gratuitous sex. Fan service works yeah. really well. We can do it. There's a, a lessening of um, social mores that are going on. Let's do all of that. Let's just throw absolutely everything at the fucking wall and see what sticks. And for a little while, things stuck. Yeah. Um, I mean, I liked it when I was younger. But then again, you watch Doctor Who, the stuff from the era of Russell T. Davis, it holds up really well. Nothing from Richard. I mean, Children of Earth is really good. I mean, the first season's all over the place. Season four in America is absolutely shit. Did you watch it? Mm-hmm. So you know about the, 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 the reason that people on Earth are not down is because of an arse crack, vagina crack in the mm-hmm. Earth, an alien vagina. Yeah. Or an arse crack. It's just shit. Everything comes back to Jack. Every book that's ever been written about torture, Jack has fucked somebody. It's all very blase. It's just I, it's, it's basically how many adventures can the promiscuous immortal person have? Too many. Quite a lot from those signs, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but they I mean, do that better in Lucifer, so fuck it. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's just, it's it tries too hard to be edgy and they try and make the team edgy and sexy and they all just come off as cunts in season one at least. And I don't know. I just don't love it. I love Doctor Who, the old Doctor Who that I used to love before the current incarnation, but Torchwood, even Children of Earth is most probably the best five-parter. That was a good season, but I don't know. It's just not very well remembered. And there's a reason it hasn't come back on television. I don't think there's a fan base. The fan base for it is massive. But I don't think there's a viewing audience for it anymore. It doesn't go far enough in any direction for there to be a viewing audience for it anymore. No. I I wondered if that they would be able to bring it back, but I don't really want them to. I would like Torchwood to to just stay where it is. I just never got into Torchwood. I'm a as all of us are, I'm a massive Who fan, but you know, Torchwood just never kind of... I missed the first few episodes, and so I never really got into it. You did. And it sounds like I didn't miss a huge amount by not You really did it. You had sex orgasm aliens where people were having sex. So an alien would possess them. Right. Uh, you had, like, a cyber woman that one of the team members brought in from Canary Wolf at the end of season two of Doctor Who, David Tennant's season, with Rose, uh, Billy Piper. And it was like a really sexy bikini cyber woman. Um, it's really shit, basically. It's just utter, utter shit. They're the worst secret. Everyone knows. It always who- just so happens that Mr. Harkness is the one who finds the sexy versions of everything. Yeah. And that's, that's really- just, oh, oh, look at the coincidence. Oh, go, go flirt and fuck something else. Every time in the novels as well, because I was a big Torchwood fan 10 years ago. I've read all the novels that were published. Anytime there was a character from the past, Jack's fucked them. In the audios, Jack's fucked them. It's like, oh my God, it's boring. It's not sexy. So I do, I was really happy to see Captain Jack in Doctor Who this season. This new season this year. Don't get me wrong, but you can leave Torchwood behind. Don't bring Torchwood with you, please, for next year. So Torchwood goes into room 101, never to be discussed again. Yes. Yes, please. That is it. There will never be a special on Torchwood. Okay, so now moving on to James Corden. 
Yeah. So where's your barrier on James Corden? Um, <laughs> he can put him down. John Berriman's always annoying for me. But James Corden, I'm... I can leave and take him depending on the performance. I, I like him most of the time. But a lot of people don't like him. I do like him, but he's gone very Hollywood since he's gone and worked out in America, which is fair enough because you have to be that way to be a talk show host. Yeah, he's very good but, at it. And he is good at it. But I feel like it's affected other things. Like um, Rob Brydon was saying when they did the uh, Gavin and Stacey Christmas special last year, it took them a couple of days of them telling James Corden, you're being a dick before he turned into himself again. And yeah. he did, but he was being all, but they were saying he was being quite a kind of American about things, not meant as a derogatory term, but you know what I mean? Kind of loud and brash, he was more than himself. And it took a couple of days to kind of get him to come down to being his old self again. So, but you know what? I've always, he's been in lots of things. There's lots of shows he does that I do enjoy. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually going to I'm, I'm like use that lecture. point later on, Tom, actually, in, in, in something I'm going to talk about. But it makes sense that he gets worse off after having been in that media cycle mm. rather than in the British one. So Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys ever watch A League of Their Own. With Jamie Redknapp and the cricketer. Yeah, which is hosted by James Corden. Really funny. Yeah, love that show. Absolutely love that show. And stuff like that, you can see that James Corden's actually a popular guy and you don't tend to be kind of like one of the guys if you're if you're a complete dick in reality. So on that basis, I assume that he's obviously a reasonably okay guy. He's also a very clever writer. Yeah, because Gavin and Stacey, we we have to put Gavin and Stacey up there in sort of the absolute top tier of British comedy. You and I don't agree on that, but I don't okay. dislike Gavin and Stacey. You're hijacking my point. Sorry. And Gavin, Gavin and Stacey is what I wanted to talk about. I want to get okay, back sorry. on Go for it. So, you guys have both hit it. Because I watched a movie today with James Corden in. And Which my one? wife went, um, begin again with Mark Ruffalo. Here at Nightly about being musicians in New York. It's a really underrated film from 2014. Quite good. And James Corden has, he's, sometimes he can be too much, but in this role, he's good James Corden, like Smithy, for giving okay. Stacey. Just not loud, just on the level where I do laugh at his enthusiasm. Yeah, okay. Um, gotcha. So that's why I wanted to talk. I, I was thinking, Gavin and Stacey, we haven't talked about it yet. Gavin and Stacey, um, I really didn't like the cliffhanger at the end of the Christmas special, but I did laugh my whole way through the Christmas one. Um, for people that don't know, it's a story of a English man from Essex called Gavin, and uh, um, who falls in love with a bunch girl. Oh, look, called... look who's left the cupboard! Oh my word! Look who's here! Oh, oh, how oh, did oh, you pick oh, the lock, Troy? Wow! He came out. He came Ooh. out of the cupboard. Hello, Troy. My gosh, it was, it was rough. It was rough. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Have what you been you... in search of another charm fan? I uh, know. I was, I was searching. It was, it was tough. It was tough. But don't worry. I got some. Always coming. Glad it's coming. you admit it. It's coming. It's co- no. I'm saying it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You just paid with yourself, didn't you? Really? Because you realised there were no charm fans. So. <laughs> oh wow. So I'm, I'm gonna get back on point because I'm getting. Right. Nice to see you. Go, 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 Gavin and Stacey. James oh, Gordon. Fucking professional. You should have stayed in the cupboard. But no, it's fine. Um. <laughs> So, no, lots of love, Troy. Um, Gavin and Stacey, yeah, James and Gordon. you didn't now. lock the cupboard properly. I'm going to do it next time. I'm going to fucking... <laughs> Why is it going to be always... Keep talking, keep talking. We'll lull him into going. a false sense of security. Then we'll all shove him back in the cupboard when he thinks it'll he's be, safe. It'll be like okay. Black Mirror all last week again. Flashbacks of it all going wrong. Right, Gavin okay. Stacey is um, about love affairs... Um, and it's quite simple. It's quite easy. It doesn't try too hard to be funny. Um, there's a bit of a culture shock uh, between English and Welsh people. Yes, America, we are separate cultures, so we do get surprised by each other. We are not united. Mm-hmm. No, that. Scotland, Northern Ireland, England and Wales are very different cultures. Thank you. Fuck you. Get that right. Um, and for me, it's it's just simple, and I can watch it, and I've seen it about six, seven times. Um, I, can't, I can't get enough of Gavin and Stacey. I, I cannot get enough of it. 
he's the star. Of, it's a really good ensemble as well. Smithy can be a bit annoying sometimes. But he's meant to be. But he is meant to be, and that's no discredit to James Corden. But this is where I think people hate James Corden a lot because they think he's a bit of a whiny shit in real life. He's actually very nice. I've met him myself. Very pleasant young man. He's older than me, but okay. But he's very pleasant. Gave me time. Gave me a couple of minutes of his time a couple of years ago. Very polite guy. Shook my hand. Took a picture. Lovely. Like, lovely. Um, right. So what do you guys think of Gavin Stacey, quickly? Um, I have everything uh, on DVD. Yeah. And I don't lend it out just in case someone wouldn't give it back. Okay. I have to admit, I haven't actually watched all of it. Just Even though I like James Corden and I know he's a great writer and the couple of episodes I have seen I've really enjoyed, when yeah. it first came out, the premise just didn't grab me. It gets better. No, it's I know, the- but that that's the reason that I haven't watched all of it because it's just... I have to kind of be caught by the idea of something yeah. to watch it when it first comes out. I'll get round to watching all of Gavin Stacey at some point in my life. Okay. But it's not like I must see this now. There are other shows where people have gone, you've got to watch this. And I've immediately jumped into watching it because the premise grabbed my attention. Okay. But I've got nothing against the show. It's not. This is not a negative towards Gavin and Stacey. It's just, okay. it's on my I, list. I it's, have a comparison. Okay. Right. So whenever I think about Gavin and Stacey and the way it's written and the way it's presented, the, the first actual thing which makes me feel sort of the same way is the author, Nick Hornby. Yes, I get where you're, where you're coming from. The guy who wrote About a Boy, which was then turned into the movie with Nick Holt and yeah. Uh, Grant. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. It, it feels the same way. But they've managed to keep that consistency and make everything they've added on and all the extra stuff that they've done and and popular demand and everything. And it all feels like it's part of that same sort of novel. Yeah, it does. It. That's why I like it. And that's why I think it ranks up there as one of the absolute best British comedies is because, well, really, that that level of consistency, you don't have it in many things. It's gentle. It knows what it is. It isn't being pretentious. It's just fucking cool the whole way through. Mm, true. Um, what about you, Troy? Since you're such a late starter. Ha <laughs> ha! The best for last. Okay, so, Gavin Stacey, man. Oh, my days. I can't say about Gavin and Stacey. Obviously, I grew up on it, but um, it reminds me of um, a little bit of Peep Shop for some reason. It always my, uh, took it in that same vein. For some reason, watching the show, Gavin and Stacey, it was like a good comedy show, but it wasn't like the top tier echelon of comedy shows, to be fair. But it, um, it got by, it got by. So I'm going to say on that, Gavin and Stacey, it's a solid but, show. Yeah. I would say Peep Show's better, but it's very different from Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, Peep Show. It's hard to compare those two. I fucking hate Peep Show. Well, what was that? Was that? I fucking hate Peep Show. No, oh, you hate Peep Show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand why Dan hates Peep Show. Dan. Well, okay because Dan, you can take a nice long holiday on the second podcast when we get to Peep Show. <laughs> um, you can take like a whole year off, bro. Um, um, so basically, well, we're doing Peep Show, but the thing is, Gavin Stacey is very popular. Where Peep Show is like a very niche. Oh, it thing. is, it is, yeah, it is, and it's well deserved. I loved it at Christmas. Um, so that's that. Um, also, Torchwood, uh, Troy, we drop kick John Barman in the face. Um, oh, what was that bad? Quickly. Well, what have you about John Barman? What do you, you do about John Barman? What do you do? John Barman just can't act. Oh, oh, here we go. Of course he can. Oh, oh my God, bad. Troy, go back to the fucking <laughs> <laughs> The disrespect for John Barman, my God. He can't. What? No, 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 no. Point out to me something that he's done that's worthy of fucking acting respect. My yes. gosh, you know what? Hey. No, bro, he's the man, bro. Hey, um, he's an arrow. An arrow. He's amazing in that. Torture. He's no, amazing he's in not. That. He's fucking he's adequate. Am- he's in amazing that. in that. I was gonna say that he's amazing. In that he brings that show to a whole another level, bro. But from he can't act any time that there's a d- dramatic scene. Oh my god. 
American in the up, and he knows he's meant to be Scottish, but he's got an American accent, so I Every, think he's American. What did I just step into when I came onto this podcast? What, what's going on? You should stay in the fucking cupboard, Troy. Every what's going single on? scene that he is in, I expect him to put on a pair of ice skates to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I expect him to start breaking into fucking dance, jazz hands, the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to lie, the, the voice does, he's, he's a bit camp, too campy, though. I'm going to lie. He used to get away with that. But. And his teeth are fucking fake, bruv. Like he's other, than that, other than that, he's solid, man. Other than that, he's solid. Look at his teeth. He was like Mr. Ed. Right, okay. So, <laughs> oh, who wants to go next? Fuck you, John Barman. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm, I'm sorry, John Barman fans. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit. I'm sorry for these guys. I'm sorry. Come on, I don't give a shit. Get out of my Doctor Who as well, you motherfucker. Anyway, guys, <laughs> please take over. Okay, who's next? Uh, it's up to you guys. All right, 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 right. So since we're on the vitriol train, let me go next. <laughs> go on, go on. This should be a podcast today. Who you guys fired up? I love it. I am pissed off. John Barman sucks because... No, no, okay. because I am suck. pissed off. And I, I'm not pissed off at any single television show. I am pissed off at fucking loads of them. Oh, my gosh. And there's two separate things that I'm pissed off about. And I'm going to start with the more sort of vanilla one and then get to the more controversial side of things a little bit later. Okay. So if you watch soap operas, you're in a cult. <laughs> what was that, cunt? Yes, I do agree. <laughs> no, you're in a cult. It's like you're in a cult. If, if you are in a soap opera fandom, and I say this as someone who is very closely related to the world of soap operas, by blood, you're in a fucking cult. <laughs> okay. That is your religion. You are worshipping it just as much as you are worshipping whatever god you feel you worship or whatever fucking spirituality you feel you worship. You are a slave to that thing and it does nothing for you. Okay. <laughs> All it does is make you more miserable. All it does is bring the absolute grey, mundane, fuck-witted stuff right to your doorstep and dramatise it so that you can temporarily, while watching it, feel a little bit better about your life and then spend the rest of your life being fucking corrupted by that show in every logical decision you make. My God. Is this your new stand-up routine, Dan, for the new old Northern Irish talent? Unleashed. This is his true form. Wow. Revealed. He's only angry because you got the cupboard, Troy. <laughs> I am related to... Um, Are you Bill saying Cobb? people that like soaps? Are you saying that people that like soaps don't tend to have good TV taste? I'm saying people who like soaps have been sucked into something and need to get the fuck out. Okay. I'm saying people who like soap operas have something broken by them, by the soap operas themselves. Is this an allusion to Troy and his and his dubious stuff that he says? Is this really where it's all coming from? I feel like you're a psychiatrist right now. So what? No. What? what no, I, I, I honestly, you, I believe you this. I believe this for the longest fucking time. Neighbors, wow. EastEnders, Coronation Street. Fucking Home hey, and Away. Bird. Fucking oh, no. Emmerdale. Fucking whatever the fuck you want. Brookside when it was fucking on. All of that shit. What's the E4 one with, where everyone's fucking each other just as much as John Barrowman? That one as well. They can all go fuck themselves. Oh, holy ox in that. <laughs> wow. They are a waste of TV time. Okay. Wow. And I will not be dissuaded from this. Can but I having said question? that, do any of you watch soap operas? Well, I, 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 I used to. Yeah. Not I'm anymore. Very... I used to, I used to watch EastEnders, but yeah. that was years ago. Yeah, it used to be. Are you saying that you find one thing that I find with soap operas is that they're very, they've only got so many storylines which they wheel out throughout the year, recycle. Um, think about it. The Mitchells and the Bills have been in EastEnders forever. And it's just comical how many ex-wives Phil Mitchell and Ian Bill have at this point. I think they fucked the same woman twice, two or three times, am I correct? Yeah, they've been married to the same... Well, Phil's... Isn't Phil... Wasn't Phil married to Ian's mum at one point? 
See, this is what I mean. Yeah. It's so stupid. If you look at the character's history, the Wikipedia page is ridiculous. Um, yeah. I don't just have Phil and Ian fuck each other and get married next week for Christmas or something. I don't know. What What is there left to do? I do understand Dan's anger. I mean, I don't hate people that like soaps. Don't get no, me wrong. No, exactly. no I, don't, I don't hate you, but you're in a fucking cult. I don't like soap, so I'm not in a cult. Um, but I understand like the recycling. I think soaps are really boring and lazy. And yeah, they just too much, too much garbage now. SJW, oh. or they're all to hell now. They don't try to think new. They literally recycle a fair baby, adultery, wedding, death, la 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 la. They are literally cancer. They are television cancer. But what's worse, Love Island, the Mistenders? Do you think these people also watch Love Island, Big Brother? Oh, no. Yes, of course. Wow. Hey, no, Love Island is another type of anyone, anyone who is that into their soap operas is going to jump at the chance to watch Love Island. I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Oh, hell no, hell no. I know people that would never watch Love Island. Love Island is trash. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, let me be Tom. Let me be Tom Hill for a second and try and play the devil's advocate here. Okay. Right. I've always thought, though, you need the trashy shit shows. I know they get the high ratings and everything, and X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, and you see the amount of stupid people in this country. The stupid people come out on these shows for any country. Mm. But. You need those people to make cash for our, our little dramas, our comedies that don't get watched as much. We kind of need, without them, if they all disappear tomorrow night, then our TV world would be a lot smaller, less money for the, the smaller independent mm -hmm. stuff that we like. You need the gratuitous juggernaut in order to fund the good stuff, yeah. Yeah, you need them. Yeah. So would you agree with me on that? I know, I know that it's sad, mm -hmm. but for me... That's the thing. I'm willing to put up with it if I don't have to watch it. Yeah. I know it's fun, but I'm, I'm... <laughs> fun what I like, so I'm, I'm willing to put up with it. <laughs> I'm going to slightly defend soap operas here, but not for the reason of them being any good. Okay. They are the one place on earth where people who think they can act can go and get a job for life. I mean, the guy who plays Ian Beale, he's got three facial expressions, and that's it. Yeah, he's managed to make like, a yeah. career out of that. So he it was it, it gives people hope. Yes, exactly. That that's Tom. Yeah, that's true. He looks, that's he looks, um, he looks um, basically like he's constipated. And what I find funny is most people from soaps don't get back into real acting. They get stuck in soaps. Yeah, or they become big stars because they were actually good enough to be in anything other yeah, than a soap. break out, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few people like Thames and Outweight and stuff that have managed to yeah. have quite a good career outside. But Whereas lot... Craig fucking Charles went backwards. Oh yeah, from Red Dwarf to Carnation Street. We're going to come to that episode one day in Smug Mode and I'm going to spit on that entire free part. <laughs> I hate the fact they went to Carnation Street. It's not funny. It was supposed to be meta. It wasn't funny. It was shit. But we'll get to that one day. Um, but I understand Dan's pain. Troy? What about your mum? Your mum your mum and sister love soaps, don't they? Yeah, they watch them, yeah. It's just something to watch, you know what I mean? You know, you know, you know you're old, it's like flipping bored and just gets you, you know what I mean? Just watch something, something to watch, isn't it? Okay, so Dan, that was the non-controversial one. I hate yeah. to think where we're going with the next one. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in May 2012... Um, there was uh, something that was passed in uh, the US, the National Defense Authorization Act, the newest version of it that happened, um, legalized the use of propaganda on the American public. Yeah. Um, right. The amendment actually uh, nullified the Smith Month Act of 1948, which forbids information and psychological operations aimed at influencing US public opinion. Right. And when the House passed this act, which then nullified that, um, what happened was that almost immediately there were uncontested and unreported levels of propaganda that were phased into anything that was a media presentation in the USA, which unfortunately doesn't just affect American citizens. 
So by extrapolation, anything which has been an American television program or movie or news program or radio show, really mm -hmm. pretty much anything in mainstream media that has come out of America since 2012 has been susceptible to being filled with unfair, underhanded and unreported propaganda from the American government. Okay. That's Can only part of what I want to talk about. That's only part of what I want to talk about. That's just the beginning of it. Since then, we have had multiple levels of what's been going on in the American media, including the new medias of things like Netflix and your Amazon Primes and your Disney Pluses and all this sort of stuff coming on, where we have a lot of portrayals of people who are not conforming to norms in some very serious ways. A couple which really, really resonate with me because of personal connections, because of recent experiences, and because of myself, are their portrayals of autism and also of mental health issues in the media. Yeah. I just want to put that NDAA thing out there, not because I'm going to come back to it in any major way about this, but because just keep it in mind. There have been what? In the last decade, something like 20 or 30 attempts at representing in an ensemble cast or in an actual like protagonist role, someone on the autistic spectrum. Just off the top of my head, I'm thinking atypical, the good doctor, scorpion. Um, Alphas, those are just straight off the top of my head. Those are things that I've seen portrayals of autism in. Mm. And off the back of that, I, I know a fair few people who have actually been diagnosed or are self diagnosed, and that's valid as well, right? Who then get basically pigeonholed based off of this very, very narrow view of what autism is. Mm. Either they get pigeonholed negatively because the portrayal that someone has seen has been one where everything is terrible mm. and everything about this autistic person is absolutely terrible. And that's less likely to be in a mainstream TV show where they're a main character and more likely to be in something from some kind of uh, autism speaks related uh, company or something because they basically do try and advertise autism as just being a problem that has a cure. Mm. But the ones that we that you get on TV are basically this sort of glamorized version of everything. Okay. With autism, it's glamorized like they're the super geniuses or they're the ones who just that they've they've got it better than other people in a lot of ways. Mm. And yeah, they face their challenges and yeah, they have communication difficulties and those difficulties are very stereotyped. But then also they're stereotyped in this sort of, oh, but we have this thing that makes up for it. So we're actually quite fortunate. And, blah, 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 blah. and being an autistic person, not quite good with that. Hmm. But even have more than seen, that. Have you seen a show called Atypical? Yes, Atypical. Yeah. That does it right. I don't, I've already no, said. No, it doesn't. It fucking doesn't. Nothing has done it right. Everything is one dimensional, focused on one level, and doesn't allow for the scope or the breadth or any level of understanding of anything more than that single individual. Can but I, in many of those shows, they do portray the experience of that single individual as being the norm for whichever thing they're talking about, whether that's autism, whether that's mental health, schizophrenia, depression, whatever. Question, and, what do you hate, what do, which, who do you hate more, Sheldon, Sheldon Cooper or the guy from The Typical? Which is the worst portrayal for you, like the two? You're missing the point, Ben. Completely missing the point. I do not hate their portrayals being in character, Either of them. Okay. They serve okay. a purpose. Both of them serve a purpose in terms of their own character inside the show. 
Do you think they're simplifying? Sheldon, I hate less because you don't see him being portrayed and people going, this is autism. You, you, so you think it's a simplified, a pro, they show a simplified side of autism on TV? I, I think they simplify the entire question of trying to portray it to make it easier for themselves. Yeah, and I think they do they damage to people who are trying to understand, and they do damage to people who are actually experiencing and living it by yeah. doing so, because they're trying to make a buck, and this is a hot topic, and it's fashionable. Um, Same thing with suicide and depression. 13 Reasons Why needs to be the fuck off a of TV. Yeah, already. that show needs to fuck off. I just hate that show. It's ridiculous. 13 Reasons Why needs to be the fuck away. It needs to be fucking banned. And it's not because it is dealing with those issues. It's because it's still in a fucking money grab. It has no actual message that helps anyone with those issues properly. And it glamorizes the fucking thing the whole way through. It's the same as the virgin suicides back in 2016. Everyone fucking glamorized up these mysterious characters who just happened to have depression and were teenage girls with depression. Yeah. And it caused a whole lot of shit. Where people got into mental health issues off the back of it seeming mysterious and cool and then never being able to get the fuck out of it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to pick that up another time though, dude, because we need the other two to talk as well. Sorry, I had to have that rant. Thank oh, you it's very okay. Much for me have right, that. We we show him. Here, bro. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Okay. I I, I would it? have another three or four hours to talk on it, but uh, trust me, I know, I know. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. As someone who's autistic, I completely understand where you're coming from, though, Dan. Trust me. It's just all of it. It's just stop being such money grabbing fuckwits at the expense of so many people. I wish people would stop thinking autism is simple. It's not. It's fucking complicated stuff. No, none of that shit's simple. Nothing no, ever. It's not. You can't say there's a checklist for people with autism. It's uh, it's more of a um, very complicated thing. There's different things that people deal with with autism. Everyone's unique. You know what I mean? There's no. There's no, this is autism. You can't just show someone who's autistic. Gone, this and, there's, and there's no, this is depression. And there's no, this is schizophrenia. And there's yeah. no, this is suicidal. And there's no, this is... Yeah. No. That's that's what I have such a problem with. That's why I hate people do that. They're like, oh, I know, I understand that you're autistic. It's like, you don't understand autism. You just think you know. And I've had to tell a lot of people... You need to stop talking down to me like you know me because you think you understand autism. I completely get it, though. No, you understand it, mate. Anyway, sorry. My, my time is up. No, sorry, well done. Good. Thank you for having that conversation. Thank you. That wasn't really a conversation. It was a rant. Well, thank you for the rant, dude. Very <laughs> passionate. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, man. We got you. We got you. Tom, it's up to you. What do you want to do? You want to go first, or are you going to? I, I don't really feel like I can just talk about like random TV shows after that. I know. I feel, I feel weird now. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like I can just talk about like like yeah. TV shows. Yeah, because because literally my two picks are comedy picks. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. thanks, for coming, thanks for coming to Scroll Eye Central. We're, we're going to go now. Thank you for this very. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's what that's happening right now. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I can go to sleep early. It's fine. No, right. You two are. Oh, okay. I, I'll no, go. I'm, I'm serious. No, literally, I'm serious too. But I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, okay, so first off, uh, we've got a, on a lighter note, we've got a TV show called Recess. Oh, uh, is that the TV? Is that the show set in a school? In yes. Baby boy, we need to talk about this show. Finally, <laughs> after 23 episodes, he finally gets one that I love. Well done. <laughs> See, you love this is universal. Yeah, Everyone loves right. Recess. Everyone no, loves you it. don't. Nobody knows what Recess is. It's very underground, but well oh, done. Oh, they don't know Recess. They've got problems, bro. Even a blind dog can get one, right? Well done. Oh, wow. This, this is going to be my great picks every week. Stella. This is the okay. first time I've actually got excited at a Troy pick. Uh, okay, okay. The, no, 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 they're, they're kids, Ben. I know they're, no, they're underage. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. All right, okay. Let's get to this now. All right, so recess. You know, anyone who's seen Fox Kids back in the day as a, as a child? Fox, oh, my days. Fox, 
this was the show. Recess, Pepper Ran, Demon Head Mouse, those kind of those kind of times, man. Bone chillers, all those epic shows, those cartoons, A. Arnold. This is the kind of time it was around, yo. These kind of times. I loved it. Um, so there were these kids, yeah. These these actually no six, yeah. Six main kids. You had TJ, who was like the ultimate prankster, who was like the main, he was like the cool kid, you know what I'm saying? Saying pranks on the teachers. And Manelli. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Manelli. My gosh, Manelli. Yeah. Like, I'm getting there. You had Vincent, you know what I'm saying? You had the, the jock Vincent, you know what I'm saying? You had all the Manelli. Spinelli. Oh, Spinelli. That's it. Spinelli. My God, Spinelli. The tomboy, you know what I'm saying? The prototype for any of these archetypes later on in these SJW times. So, yeah, Spinelli is no great character right there. Tough guy, you know, powerful image. Um, the intimidating person, scaring people on the playground. I was like, yeah, let's go, Spinelli, let's go. Um, then you had, who else you had in there? So you had my girl, Gretchen, mm-hmm. academically gifted. Big glasses, red hair. Oh, my days, yes, red hair. Oh, the red hair. My gosh, I love a woman with red hair. Let's get that straight right now. I love my red hair girls. Let's get that straight right now. Let's do it. Okay. No, second did. Second. Oh, second, second did. Okay. I like that. I like that. Oh, I'm Irish. What the fuck do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. Irish, hey, you never know. You never know that. So, let's get into this, yo. I love my red hair people. I love red hair people, man. Always had good times with red hair people. Um, so, also, we had Mikey up in there. Mikey, the overweight, kind hearted kid. You know, you always have those big kids on the, on the playground. You probably think they're like literally aggressive, but they're kind, sweethearts, you know. Those kind of kids. Until they lose their temper. Yeah, exactly. When they snap, it's a wrap. My gosh. When they snap, it's game over for you. Death. Straight one punch man style, bro. It's game over. Um, and then after that, who do you have in here? We had Gus. Oh, oh Gus. My God. <laughs> I forgot about Gus. <laughs> I forgot. Go on, Ben. Talk about Gus for a bit. You know Gus. You know Gus, isn't it? Go on. What do you remember about Gus? Gus? Gus is the man of this show. Yes, Gus is that guy, yo. He's got a weird voice as well. Yeah. Yeah, had had them. Um, was it the um? What the other had the uh? It's not tough like crap. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, Gus is the bad bro. I love it. Elementary school, eight, third, was it? Elementary? Yes, yeah, so that was it. So yeah, so obviously it's called recess, like the American uh, term break. I remember the kindergarten kids were scary. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. The kid. That's what. Oh, yeah. I've seen some this on Disney Plus. Yeah, I absolutely adore this show. Yo, this show is amazing. It's and like a gang war between them and the the, uh, the kindergartens. Yeah, we're yeah. constantly at war with each other. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the old kids versus the young kids. I loved it, man. The beef, the beef was real in that playground. It was. <laughs> but yeah, though, anyone who hasn't seen Recess Show, hey, go check it out. Um, oh, why would you even see that now? Would that be on? That be Disney, isn't it? Yeah, so Disney Channel. Yeah, I think Disney's there on the rights to it. So yeah, Disney's Recess, created by Paul and Joe. Um, comedy show, great children's series, childhood right there, recess. Go check mm. it out. Um, so yes, that's my first pick on that one. And secondly, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I just literally just checked this out on Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's called Future Man. My it gosh. sounds like a really shit superhero. Oh my gosh, Future Man. This oh my they're not talking about comedy right now. This brought me back to comedy genre. I was out of comedy for a while. This show brought me back into it, Future Man, yo. I mean, have you heard it? Dan, Tom, and you heard of Future Man? I've seen just adverts on Prime for it. I haven't checked it. Oh, I, no, I don't know it. Oh, okay. No, so what it is <laughs> he stars Josh Hutchinson. So I mean, anyone has seen um Hunger Games. He's when you like you start it with um what's the names? Peter. He's yeah. Peter. Yes. Yeah. And British Terror Biffy are joined to send the earth. Peter! 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, him, him. Um the guy is always getting saved. Yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> Hunger Games. He had another interest in Hunger Games, the other yeah. good looking guy. He got booed in the cinema because everyone loves Peter. Oh wow. <laughs> Whatever. Pizza, pizza, pizza. pizza. <laughs> so yeah, so he's that. He's the star of the show, and um, he's supposed to be this this top gamer. Um, and um, he plays this game. And but it's called it Baltic Wars. Yeah, it's supposed to be this unbeatable game, and he's got to complete this level. He can never complete it. He always dies until one day he literally just completes it. But but before all that, 
he's like a janitor in his in his job, um, <laughs> and he works for this place who they work on um, um, herpes. They're trying to they stop a, um, the the dreaded disease herpes, yo. Know? And his boss, well, his um person who owns the actual um science facility, um, he's from um, um Riddick, um Pitch Black, you know, Vin Diesel's movie. So he stars it. His name's Keith David. He's like the doctor for Doctor Elias Cronish. His son's son is like literally the main villain in the future, where he literally clocks the game and the people, his characters that he always plays, they come out of the game and they literally come to life because he clocks this game. And literally, the game that they clocked was from the future. They set it up in the past, so whenever someone completed it, they would actually come to life and he would be their savior of all mankind in the future. So that is literally the, the um, main premise of this. But the humor, my gosh, the humor in this show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's quite, quite half decent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This show is solid, Joe. It's got like, how many seasons? Three seasons. But literally, I've only seen like half of the first season. So I've, I haven't caught the first season yet. Because I've been literally busy as heck watching so many shows at once. But this show is literally solid. I kid, I kid you not right now. I'm going to go watch this show. Stuff that happens literally... <laughs> <laughs> the two characters, um, what are they called Tiger and Wolf, literally they got they, they bring um Josh Hudson's character, Josh's character back <laughs> in the past. And they he, he's trying to stop um Dr. Elias so he's so he doesn't kiss this girl who has herpes. So that's that's when he gets herpes in the future, well in the present. So he doesn't create this herpes vaccine that his son's son makes and literally turns all the rest of the world or majority of the world into these um creatures or so-called creatures that you can find out later on throughout the show but it's a weird thing as well <laughs> and he's doing the dance off he's trying to stop the doctor from kissing this guy it's, it's, it's just hilarious and the two game characters come out of the actual um the game are cracking me up all the time they're literally like eating rats in the future they're just they're just mental they're killing everyone beating people up and it's like oh man we kill these literally there's a scene where the the guy car- character who came out of the game Literally, he couldn't do a high five with this old man. So, so literally, he cuts to a scene, cuts back. His fingers are all broken in half. Literally, he's breaking this guy's fingers because he can't do a high five. It's mental. It's funny as heck. It's it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Seth Rogen, second produced it. So you know it's gonna be epic. Oh, he's on a run right now. He's on a roll. He is on a roll. Anyone has his future, man? Bruh. Uh, Boom. Uh, yeah. All right. No, no, no. You've sold it. You've sold it. I'm a try. Uh, do it, do it. Yeah, especially Dan, Dan I think right now. It is Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Peter. Peter, have you seen it? Peter. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, let me touch your face, Peter. Uh, I, I think you know, Dan, Dan's humor, you'll like, you'll love it. You'll love it, Dan. I could get some acting ability from you, Peter, because I can't act. I'm Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, I wow. have one expression. So okay. Um, is trash. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. You've done quite well. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. And he's um, <laughs> send us home, buddy. I'm serious, man. I don't feel like I can do yeah, it. Tom feels so comfortable. He's like, he's like, damn, I can't do it. Tom is broken. Tom hasn't come back from all Literally, the drugs. My mind was broken so much. I, didn't know I could do it. I didn't know. The, the autism anger from Dan. <laughs> of autism. Should have and, kept it till the end. No, it's okay. <laughs> That's Troy's mention of Houdini's way out of the cupboard. Like, so, yeah, peekaboo. Yeah, peekaboo, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so, I, think, uh, I, I, I do think we have to acknowledge something here, Ben. Go on. What's up? We, we might already be very, very set in our ways and very set that of, of the four of us, it's, yeah. it's quite difficult to figure out who has the best taste and very easy to figure out who has the worst. Yeah, so... But also, conversely... It's now become very easy to figure out who is the most skilled because getting out of the cupboard all by himself and also managing to talk about things after I've gone on a world ending fucking rant. <laughs> I think we have to give that title to Troy. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Go on, Dan. Uh, don't worry, Troy. You're still the worst taste of the lot of us. Oh, here we go. Oh, geez. Uh, Just kill him. Kill the mood, man. Kill the mood, bro. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, you got one. You said, well done. You oh, want a cookie? God. Right. I, hey, check man, I, take, I, take, I take I'll take the whole shot, bro. I'll take it. Hey, you take a cookie, bro. Nah, 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 more that. than that, more than that, bro. Come on. Get back in your spot. Get the cookie. <laughs> One cookie. It's done good. Next week, wow. two cookies. If well, Ben behaving badly next week. The week after, 
free two cookies if you're a good boy. Oh, wow. Good Let's good see boy. if you can build this. How dare you? Generally, I'm looking at your history of your picks. Boy, I'm not touching any of them. Oh, my picks are flipping fire. What do you mean? You when you said Charmed on episode one. My that's God, Charmed. It had to be done. Just to set, set, set the president of greatness. You know what I'm saying? None of your fans, there. none of your charm people. Okay, I'm going to set you something for your YouTube channel. If Tom's not going to do anything, Go on. I'm going to end this podcast then. But not before I want to challenge you. I want you to do a video about charms on your YouTube channel. Okay, okay. I want to see how many charm fans come out. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do that. I want to see them. And if they, if they want to come fight me, I will get them my video recorder and I will come and call them. <laughs> hey, channel. you know what? I'm going I'm to put a word out. I'm going to be like, hey, there's a guy called Ben, yo. Hey, he was the days after you, yo. Charm fans, get him. Listen to the podcast because I've put some forums now. I've spread the name of the podcast around. Right? Your child fans, like wet fairy farts, nowhere to be seen. Oh, fuck. Invisible man. Invisible fans. Oh, my that's God. Sequel. Can, Invis- I, can I make... Sorry, I've just thought of something that's got me worried, and I'd like Go to on. make a qualifying statement off of something. Go on. I don't hate any of the characters that I was talking about in my rant. Mm. I hate yeah. the way they're used. Yeah. Yeah, right. You yeah, it's like I mean? the way they're used. It's like I, the way they're used, yeah. I love the TV show Scorpion, yeah. for example. Oh, yeah, Scorpion, that's a great show. I love that. Uh, any, anyone who hasn't seen it, well worth a watch. A um, bunch of uh, neurodiverse individuals, each yeah. of them very, very quirky, each of them super geniuses. <laughs> Solve, no one else fucking can, whether it's emergencies or crimes or whatever. But I, I, just, I just wanted to point out, look, I, I'm not hating on the characters. I'm not hating on the actors. Mm. I'm just hating on the system. Yeah, fair play. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's just oh, the easy. I know what you mean, though, Tom. It's just like the um, easiest trop to use get, to get the um, autistic guy to like, solve all the problems, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. You know what I mean? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. They, uh, they, they, have, a, they have an idea in Hollywood. Um, generally, yeah. like, they do kind of. They don't go into how complicated it is. Even. Okay. Unlike Dan, I love a typical. But. Like Dan has said, they don't show the complications, but they go into it a bit more than Big Bang Theory. Mm. But they don't really go into it. They but Big the Bang same. Theory isn't specifically about autism. It's about yeah. science, guys, yeah. who just happen to be what autistic. What I'm saying about a typical is, looking back on it, they go over the surface, but they never really get into how Sam feels, why he feels like this. They don't really go for it. They just do the bare... They make it funny. It is a good show, but... They could do more of it. Thank you, Dan, for pointing that out. I do look at that now. Thank you. Tom, are you going to give us something? I don't want to talk about either of the shows I wanted to because they're shows that I both love and I can't be passionate about them right now. Dan. Dan. Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry, Tom. You know I didn't me know that was going to happen. Because I was so angry about John Barrowman and Torchwood and how shit it was. And Can't say off. <laughs> like, we're sorry. We're sorry, Tom. We can keep them for another week. Anyway. Yeah, just save them up. Save them up. Oh, that's is that okay idea. with you, Tom? One of us has been here, but not. So I, to be fair, I'm going to be honest with you. Before we recorded, um, if it was, uh, I didn't have anything planned. So if we'd have just been down on his own this week, if it had gone this way. See, this is the thing. I normally don't have anything planned until I get here. And it's no, I, I no, literally, like literally. I, yeah, because Tom, literally, I had, week, I had nothing. I actually had two things that were like, well, these are shows that I really, really want to talk about. And I've kind of like been thinking about them quite a lot. Hmm. You were but, in yeah. silence. Um, I got off, a, like, I kind of scrambled for two things. Troy was locked in the cupboard until he got out. If it's a good thing Dan like Dan could have done this on his own, he could have been a forty-five minute rant on on stuff. Very different show this week. Very interesting. Okay, well we're gonna go then. But next week we're back with uh, da la 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 da 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 Gary has really big ears. I forgot how big his ears are. He does look like a really... He, he, I forgot how unique 
the actor playing Gary's face is. His very unique face. He's Martin Clunes. Yeah, Martin Clunes. Don't He's mind just watching play. If Dumbo fucked a woman, this is what it would look like. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, go now. But we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye-bye, Tom Bowman fans and everyone else. My Bye. God. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, John Bowman fans. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for these guys. I'm, sorry. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I knew Dan's going to say something. <laughs> they can come for us. We'll fucking fight them with fire. Um, oh, come on, that, sorry. I'm sorry. If if anyone's coming after me because I have gone after John Barman or anyone else on this show has gone after John Barman and they go after them, we're gonna have plenty of time to get away from them while they dance fight their way up to us. <laughs> dance fight. They most probably slap really shitly. Can't please slap. <laughs> oh no, I don't hate gay people. I just want to point that out. <laughs> Not going. <laughs> But John Barman fans will not be listened to. Torchwood fans are a weird, but they're different from Doctor Who fans. No, Doctor they are Who different. Fans, you can have a good conversation with Torchwood fans. You're talking about John Barman not being good. Fire appears in their hands. It's a bit scary. Um, but we've really got to kill this thing with fire, guys. Right, I'm off. Bye. You want to say goodbye? Sure. Yeah, bye. See you. See you later. See you next week. Na 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 na